What if your country's first line of defense was in space? For Israel, this is not a question for the future. It is the reality of today. They had to build it because they had no other choice. Welcome to War Tech Analysis. Look at a map of the Middle East. You see a small country about the size of New Jersey. It is surrounded by neighbors with large armies and groups that have threatened its safety for over 70 years. For decades, rockets and missiles have been fired at its towns and cities. Early defense systems, like the famous Iron Dome, work very well, but they have a big problem. They stop rockets close to home, right in the sky above the cities they protect. When a rocket is destroyed there, the broken pieces, the deadly debris, fall from the sky. This debris can hurt people and damage buildings. It turns a successful defense into a dangerous event. So Israel faced a hard question. How do you stop a missile without creating a rain of fire over your own people? The answer was not to build a better wall. The answer was to move the entire battlefield. They pushed the fight away from their cities, away from their skies, and into a place where an explosion leaves no trace, the empty vacuum of space. To do this, they did not create one new weapon. They created a perfect pair, a partnership of two machines that talk to each other faster than a blink. One machine is the ultimate lookout, a watchman in the sky. The other is the ultimate sniper, a bullet that can hit another bullet from a hundred miles away. First, let's talk about the watchman, the eye in the sky. If you want to stop a missile, you cannot wait until you see it on radar. By then, it is often too late. You need to see the attack before it even begins. You need to see the missile when it is still on the ground being prepared. To see something hundreds of miles away, you need the highest view possible. You need to see it from space. This is the job of Israel's OFEC satellites. OFEC is a Hebrew word. It means horizon. The name tells you everything. These satellites push Israel's sight to the very edge of the earth. They are Israel's own private eyes, watching over the region every minute of every day. Why is this so critical? In a crisis, you cannot depend on friends. You cannot wait for another country to send you a picture or give you permission. You need your own information, and you need it right now. The OFEC satellites give Israel that power. They're a statement of independence. The newest OFEC satellite is like a super-powered detective in orbit. It does not just take photos. It sees in amazing detail. From over a hundred miles in space, it can watch a single truck drive down a desert road. It can see the heat coming from a building's roof. It can watch a military base day and night without ever blinking. This constant watching is the secret. It is not about seeing one event. It's about seeing a pattern. Maybe trucks keep bringing fuel to a hidden place in the desert at night. Maybe soldiers are moving unusual equipment. The satellite sees all this activity and sends the information back to Earth. In command centers, soldiers and computers look at this flood of data. They use smart software, artificial intelligence, to search for one thing, the tiny signs that a missile is being made ready to launch. This is the first and most important part of the shield. It is a shield of knowledge. It turns a mystery into a clear picture. It turns a guess into a fact. Often, before an enemy missile even leaves the ground, Israel knows it is there. This knowledge gives the most precious thing in a war, time. But time does not stop a missile. To stop a threat, you need action. You need a weapon that can reach out and destroy the danger long before it gets close. This brings us to the second machine, the sniper, the space bullet. Its name is the Arrow 3. Most anti-missile weapons work by exploding near their target. They blow up close to the enemy missile and hope the explosion destroys it. The Arrow 3 does not work that way at all. It does not have a traditional warhead. It does not explode. Instead, the Arrow 3 works on a simple, brutal idea, a direct hit. 
It is designed to be a bullet that hits another bullet. It smashes into the enemy warhead with so much force that both objects are completely destroyed. Think of the most difficult shot you can imagine. Now imagine both the shooter and the target are moving faster than 10 times the speed of sound, and they are meeting in the dark, airless silence of space. That's the Aero 3's job. The missile launches with a powerful roar. It flies straight up, higher and higher, punching through the sky. It climbs past where passenger jets fly, past where the air gets thin, and into the region we call near space. We're talking about heights over 60 miles up, some say over 100 miles. At this height, the atmosphere is gone. There is no air, no weather, just the cold black silence of the void. Here, the fight becomes pure physics. Nothing slows you down. The top part of the Aero 3 is called the kill vehicle. This is the genius part. After the big rocket booster pushes it high into the sky, this kill vehicle separates. It is now on its own. It has its own brain, its own eyes, and its own tiny thrusters. Its eyes are advanced heat sensors. In the freezing cold of space, the enemy missile's warhead is a bright, hot, screaming signature. The kill vehicle's sensors lock onto that heat. Then, its computer brain takes over. It uses its small thrusters, poof, 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 to make tiny, perfect adjustments, a little to the left, a little up. It's steering itself for a head-on collision. The goal is not to get close. The goal is to hit it dead center. When the Aero 3's kill vehicle strikes the enemy warhead, the energy is incredible. It's like a freight train hitting another freight train at thousands of miles per hour. The enemy missile is vaporized. It is turned into a cloud of tiny harmless dust and gas. And because this happens in the emptiness of space, that dust simply floats away. It poses no danger to the people on the ground below. No falling debris, no collateral damage. It is the cleanest possible kill, far from home. This is the beautiful genius of the system. But it creates another huge problem. Space is enormous. How does this space bullet know where to aim? How does it find that one hot target in all that endless dark nothing? The answer is the magic link. This is where the watchman talks to the sniper. This is the secret. Let's walk through what happens step by step in a real attack. Step 1. The watch. An OFEC satellite is on duty, always scanning. Its infrared sensors pick up a sudden massive bloom of heat on the ground. This is the unmistakable signature of a large rocket engine igniting. In a fraction of a second, its computers know this is a missile launch. Step 2. The first shout. This satellite instantly sends a signal down to Earth. This is not a slow message. It's a lightning-fast scream of data. The message contains the exact location of the launch and the missile's direction. Step 3. The ground brain. This signal races to underground command centers in Israel. Powerful computers receive the satellite data. At the same moment, powerful ground-based radars switch on and search the sky. They find the missile. Now the computers have two sources of information. The satellites, where it started, and the radars, where it is now. They fuse this data together. In less than a minute, they know the missile's exact path. They know where it is going. They calculate the perfect spot in space to meet it and kill it. Step 4. The Order a command is sent to an Arrow 3 battery. Soldiers in a bunker press a button. The Arrow 3 launches with a thunderous roar. It is not aimed at the missile itself, but at that calculated spot in space where the missile will be in a few minutes. Step 5. The Mid-Course Chat. As the Arrow 3 flies, it is not alone. The ground radars are tracking both the enemy missile and the Arrow 3. They send constant tiny updates to the Arrow 3's kill vehicle. Adjust a little north. Now hold steady. It is like a friend guiding you to a target you cannot yet see. 
Step 6. The Handoff In the final seconds, the kill vehicle separates. Its own heat sensor turns on. It looks out into the black void and finds the bright, hot dot of the enemy warhead. Now it stops listening to the ground. Its own brain and its own thrusters take full control. It makes the last microscopic adjustments. Then, impact. A silent flash of light, high above the Earth, seen only by other satellites. A direct hit. The threat is gone. This whole process, from the missile launch to its destruction, can happen in just three to four minutes. It is a dance of technology happening at impossible speeds. It means Israel's border for defense is no longer at its coastline. Its border is now the edge of space itself. Now, people always ask, is this shield perfect? Can it be beaten? No system is perfect. The biggest threat is called a saturation attack. This means firing not one or two missiles, but dozens or even hundreds at the exact same time. The idea is to overwhelm the defense, to throw more missiles than Israel has Arrow 3 interceptors to shoot them down. This is a real challenge. Each Arrow 3 interceptor is very expensive. An enemy could try to launch more missiles than Israel can afford to shoot down. But, Israel planned for this. The Arrow 3 is not the only layer of defense. It is just the top layer, the one that works in space. Think of it like a castle. The Arrow 3 is the outermost wall, far away in the field. Inside that, there is a second layer called David's Sling. This system handles medium-range rockets and cruise missiles that fly lower and slower. And inside that, closest to home, is the famous Iron Dome. Iron Dome takes care of the short-range rockets, the ones fired from nearby areas. This is called a multi-layered defense. If some attackers get past the outer wall, the inner walls are still there, ready to fight. Another question is about new kinds of missiles. What about missiles that fly five times the speed of sound, called hypersonic missiles, or missiles that can twist and turn in flight, called maneuverable warheads? This is the never-ending race between the sword and the shield. The moment a new defense is built, people start building a new way to attack it. Israel is already working on the next generation, often called the Arrow 4. Its goal is to be faster, smarter, and able to kill these new, more dangerous threats. The OFEX satellites are getting better, too, with new cameras and computers that use better AI to spot threats even faster. So, what does all this mean for the world? Israel built this system for one reason, to survive. They had no other option, but what they created is changing military strategy everywhere. For the first time in history, a nation has a working, proven defense against long-range ballistic missiles. It shows the world that it can be done. Other powerful countries are watching closely. The United States, Japan, and others in Europe are now rushing to build their own versions of space-based sensors and space-based interceptors. A new chapter in defense has begun. Warfare is no longer just about the land, the sea, and the air. Now, it is also about the domain just above our atmosphere, near space. The country that controls that high ground has a major advantage. This technology is also a powerful form of prevention. It's what experts call a deterrent. That means it can stop an attack before it even starts. If an enemy leader knows their most expensive, powerful missiles will likely be shot down in a flash of light in space, they are much less likely to launch them in the first place. The shield creates a kind of peace by making an attack seem pointless. Of course, there are worries. Some people fear this is the first step towards putting real weapons of war in space, leading to a scary new arms race far above our heads. That is a real and serious debate for our future. But for now, the story is clear. A small nation facing big threats used its intelligence and courage to build a dome of silicon, steel, and data over its head. It built a super eye to see danger from hundreds of miles away. It built a super fist to punch that danger at the edge of space. It connected them with computers that think at the speed of light. This is not a shield from a movie. It's not magic. It's real. It is working today. And it is one of the most incredible stories of technology, survival, and human will in our time. 
If this real-world tech story amazes you, please support our channel. Hit the like button right now. It really helps war tech analysis grow, and subscribe to see more stories about the real weapons and systems that are shaping our world. Let us know in the comments below, do you think this kind of missile shield makes the world safer, or does it just push the battlefield into a new and more dangerous place? Thank you for watching. Stay curious.